I would like to start the video by saying welcome to Rasmus Hoyland. Exciting signing. Getting a striker is always exciting even though I know almost nothing about this kid. I just watched a few highlights and to me he looks like Bruno and Garnacho type of player. He offers a lot of energy, he offers directness and he offers speed and hopefully he's gonna offer goals. A lot of goals. Also this made me think that we didn't really sign a young striker for a long long time. The last young striker that we signed was Wayne Rooney so hopefully he will exceed our expectations. Now because I don't know much about the guy I'm not expecting him to be banging 35 goals. I'm not gonna be comparing him to anybody. I just hope that he helps the team to win trophies. Also having one striker is not good enough especially when your main striker is coming from a new league and he's only 20 years old and he's not really proven yet so i want them to bring mason greenwood back can you imagine the duo between mason greenwood and this kid i think we're gonna cause a lot of problems if we have mason greenwood and hoyland up front on top of that we have guys like garnacho rashford anthony bruno sancho who will be creating loads of chances for these two in the attack so yeah bring greenwood back i don't care what people are saying online about mason greenwood i already spoke about him i made a video you guys are welcome to watch it it's one of my best videos to this date performance wise it's getting a lot of views so i'm glad you guys like it but in short if his wife doesn't have an issue with it i don't have any issues with it it's none of my business bring him back now in terms of the signing if you listen to opposition fans every time they speak about hoyland the price keeps rising they start the sentence with 70 million pounds and then it keeps going on and on by each sentence they add 5 10 15 more so by the time you finish the conversation you find out that you paid 120 million pounds for hoyland and another annoying thing that's going to happen in the next season is that hoyland will always be compared to Haaland even though none of the sensible United fans are comparing him to Haaland. If you know anything about football and if you watched it long enough you will understand that these are two different type of players. Nobody in their right mind will compare Hoyland to Haaland. No decent Manchester United fan is sitting there and saying he's gonna outscore Haaland. Hoyland could score 15 goals for us and Haaland might score 55 goals again and they will be slandering Hoyland even though Hoyland will also in a way will be helping the team to achieve bigger things in this next season. You don't have to outscore a specific person to help the team. You have to keep the same energy. If you want to compare him to Haaland, why don't you compare Darwin Nunes numbers or Gabriel Jesus numbers to Haaland's numbers? And please be honest with yourselves. I rate Haaland very highly. But you have to admit that Haaland was signed for that low price because of the release clause, not because of some genius negotiator. If Haaland didn't have a release clause, he would have costed Manchester City around 300 million. And I already said that Haaland is way, way, way better player than Hoyland. There is no better young striker than Haaland in the world. Haaland is a generational talent. Hoyland is not. So please stop comparing these two. Some IQ score deficient people really believe we simply signed him because we want our own Haaland and they are both Scandinavians, they're both Vikings and one of them is a Haaland from Wish.com and the other one is original and the original costs less than the fake one. So yeah there are people like that and you would think that they're trolling but some of them actually believe that did we overpay for him probably every player is overpriced these days there is no single player that is worth that much money in the world even prime messi shouldn't cost that much but it is what it is that's how the market works and we cannot complain about it and now i want to talk about our preseason games it finally finished yesterday i already made a review for the arsenal game and the real madrid game if you guys didn't catch it you can click on my channel and, and go find them on my videos list however i did not talk about the wrexham game even though this was an academy kids playing a lot of rivals thought that we actually played our main team. These people do not do their own research. They don't even look at the lineups. We had 17, 18 year old kids playing Wrexham in California. The next day we had a Real Madrid game. 
So our main team was preparing for Real Madrid while the kids played against Wrexham. Now in that game, Hannibal stood out for me. Obviously Hannibal was the best player on the field from both sides and Dan Gore was really good as well. And then the game against Lons, Onana got caught in a high line and a lot of people panicked. I watched a lot of YouTube reactions to Onana getting caught like that and people are legitimately panicking and they are stressing now my message to united fans who are really worried about this midfield is that you guys need to relax it was a friendly game and yes onana will get caught like this few times and the players that are around him someone like dalot someone like aram van bisaka or luke shaw or our center backs they have to get used to the system you can't just teach a new system to these people that quick and once they improve Onana will be making these mistakes less and less and this wasn't really a mistake by Onana at all. And about the players, Garnacho stood out for me. Garnacho was amazing in this preseason tour. Bruno obviously amazing again. And Mason Mount getting abused online for missing sitters after sitters. Even though it's just a preseason game, people are abusing him online already. Now to those who are panicking about this midfield. Listen, transfer window is not shut yet. And I understand that you are concerned that everybody can split open our midfield. Listen, I don't think Mason Mount was signed as a main midfielder. I think Mason Mount will be benched and eventually, 2-3 years down the line, he's gonna replace Bruno. I think that's the plan of Ten Hag. I still think Amrabat is coming and I think it's gonna be Bruno, Casemiro and Amrabat in the midfield. Before you panic, you have to remind yourself that one signing could take your team to the next level. Think about how Casemiro changed our midfield. That's one signing, right? Think about how Onana is gonna change our style. That's only one signing as well. So. You cannot just panic about a preseason game against the French team. One signing can change it all. We don't know who we might sign again. Like we might sell some players and we might actually bring someone big alongside with Amrabat. So please stop doing predictions now. You should do it when the transfer window is shut. Now, if we don't sign anybody else, then you can complain. I'm not going to complain. I'm just saying you can complain. You have to remember that we still kept our squad from last year. This squad took us to the third spot and took us to two cup finals. And we still have them. We still have Ericsson. We still have the same midfield. And we're just adding to what we already have. So there's no way we can be actually worse. And I'm saying no way because... I am confident in Ten Hag. I don't think Ten Hag is a bozo. I think Ten Hag is a great manager. If you can tell the deficiencies of the team from your bedroom, I am sure Ten Hag can tell that as well. So please do not panic. Now about the athletic club game, Pelistri and Sancho were amazing. These two stood out for me. And then of course Maguire. Oh god, here we go. I think something really changed when McTominay slapped this guy's head. The way he gave away the ball brings back so many dark memories. Some people said that I was being harsh about the size of his head. Bro, I don't care. The amount of crap that we had to witness as fans because of the SpongeBob square head is actually unbearable. I don't care if I'm being rude. This real life bubble head pisses me off. The other day when we were playing, it was raining and this guy's body wasn't getting wet. Do you know why? Because his head is too big. You would think that he could read minds, but no, he causes nothing but problems. Has anyone actually seen how he puts on a shirt? Like a genuine question, right? How does he put on a shirt? How does he fit that? I think he has to step into his shirt to get dressed. He ended the Hayes Man United career for fuck's sake because he was blocking his vision with his massive head. And of course he's an easy target when he has that thing on his shoulders. You saying he has a strong heading ability? I already told you he wins headers because his head is massive. The crosses just come in and hit him in the head because it's inevitable for the ball to avoid his head and that's why people think he's good in the air the only thing that is strong about him is his shoulders for holding that thing he let his ego get to his head and now look at the size of that thing i already said that cruyff invented the false nine this guy is the definition of the false football player just get this guy out of the club please I know I'm being harsh and I know I'm being rude and I promise you he's the only player in the world, him and Krychenko, that get me emotional about football at all. I just do not like this guy at all. Listen, I wouldn't hate him this much 
if his ego wasn't this big if he kept it humble and if he kept working hard i wouldn't be this harsh on him but this guy truly believes he's the best defender in the world and that pisses me off anyways i'm gonna move on from him before his head gets to my head and i actually want to talk about new signings of course i want us to improve ideally i want us to sign amrabat and Kobe Mainu to come back and maybe one more midfielder to replace McFred and then I can say that this transfer window was successful and starting from January I think we need to start addressing our fullbacks I think we need one left back and one right back and in terms of the academy players I would keep Alvaro Fernandez on the bench I would keep Hannibal on the bench and I would keep Pelistri and obviously Mainu is going to be on the bench anyways do not send them on loan send someone like Gore or Ahmad on loan again but these four players I think they need to stay and i think they will stay now i've been hearing a lot of things mainly from arsenal fans saying that pressure is going to be on ten Hag this time because he spent this much money obviously the price keeps rising one time you hear it's 500 million the other day you hear 600 million and by the end of august they're going to say we spent 700 million with ten Hag. so no surprises there but they're saying that the pressure is going to be on ten Hag. and my question is pressure from who from you was all due disrespect i think ten Hag cares more about going to istanbul for a hair transplant than a pressure by a liverpool or arsenal fan who makes youtube videos about manchester united from their bedrooms i don't think ten Hag gives a damn about your opinions you guys need to understand that it's his second season you cannot expect him to win the champions league or the premier league and i know you're gonna say that Pep won the Premier League in his second season but you will never say that Ten Hag is a better manager than Pep right because it's not true you would be laughing your back off if some United fan claimed that Ten Hag was better than Pep so if Pep is better than Ten Hag obviously he's gonna win the Premier League before Ten Hag in his second season Pep is the best manager in the world nobody can deny that now imagine going against evolved Pep's team a team that Pep has been building for seven years a team that he can't constantly rotates a team that he constantly rejuvenates a team that just won a treble and you are expecting ten Hag to come up and beat pep to the premier league title that's what your expectations are but if a united fan says that we are going to win the league next year you are going to be laughing at his face but when he says i don't think we can win but we can challenge you're going to be like how could you be okay with challenging you should be winning it your arguments make no sense so I ignore them completely. I'm just going to point it out in hopes of that you can see how dumb you look right now. Also about this Ten Hag's football is that rival fans are laughing at United for making mistakes like getting caught in high lines and stuff saying oh that's why you should play defensively you're not ready for this but when we were playing defensively last year you guys were laughing that we had the deepest line so you guys have to make up your mind be fair and then there will be someone who's gonna reply to you fairly but other than that i had fun making this video i got worked up about mcguire thing and trust me when i say this i am very calm when it comes to football talk it's just every time i see mcguire playing for united i completely lose my mind hopefully you guys enjoyed it and if you enjoyed it hit the like button leave your comments below and subscribe for more peace